maybe 10 or 12 years ago, I was being interviewed by this guy for Nature Online magazine. And he was a dedicated Marxist who believed that you could have an industrial society and in cities without having any exploitation whatsoever, that all economic exchanges would be purely voluntary. And he was adamant about this. And I said, okay, great. So in your city, how do you get around? He said, by bus. I said, what's your bus made of? And he said, it's made of metal. And I said, where do you get the metal? And he said, from mines. And I said, how do you get people to work in these mines without exploiting them? He said, you pay them a lot. And I said, well, mining is such a miserable existence that um, it's one of the first forms of slavery, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that one. But what do you do about the fact that every hard rock mine on the planet pollutes groundwater? And so there's a river next to this mine and this river becomes polluted. And what do you do about the people who live there? He said, you pay them to move. I said, great. What if they refuse to move? He said, well, you pay them more. You just keep upping the price until they'll move. And I said, what if the bone, they've lived there for 5,000 years and the bones of their ancestors are buried there and they will not leave their ancestors. They refuse to move. He said, no, you just pay them even more. I said, no, they refuse. Money, they don't want money. They want to live with their ancestors. He said, how many of them are there? I said, I don't know. What difference does that make? Let's say there's 500. He said, well, the million people in the city vote and they vote that those 500 people have to leave. And then you go and you remove them from the land. I said, ah, so what you're telling me is you've moved within less than a minute from purely voluntary exchanges to democratic empire, land theft from indigenous people, and genocide, all so you can have a bus. And I tell that story, and people usually get it, but there's two other parts that I want to add to that story to sort of sum it up. One of them is, that the point I'm making, of course, I just want to be explicit about it, is that certain, this is just Lewis Mumford's point, certain technologies require certain social forms. And if you're going to have mining, you will have exploitation. You will have land degradation. You'll have land theft from the people who live near the mine. It comes with it. It doesn't matter what spiritual values you have. If you want to mine, you're going to get that. And that's why. Lewis Mumford called them authoritarian techniques. And that's one point I want to make. And the other point I want to make is I have no idea what the guy's name was now. I can't remember it, but I did remember it for a few years after. And I looked him up one day online and I saw that he'd written a book or two since then. And he was still pushing that um, you can have an industrial society with cities with all purely voluntary exchanges. And my point here is that this is a powerful and important lesson that I learned a long time ago, which is that most of our beliefs are simply beliefs. And when we are presented factual information or when we're presented logic that shows there's a problem with our belief system, whatever it may be, nearly always that simply goes down the memory hole and it almost never actually changes, uh, changes our analysis. Here's what I'm trying to say is that, that for most of us, myself included some of the time, but for many people all the time, facts don't actually matter to the analysis, but what we do is we set up an analysis that tries to rationalize whatever it is that we want to believe in the first place.